Okay, so today I'm out flying with my Atomasi Swordfish. Um, I haven't really used this aircraft a lot uh, the last couple of months. Um, you may have seen in a video a while back, I had a pretty bad crash to this and uh, the entire nose section got destroyed. Um, I did rebuild it. You can kind of see all these cracks that have turned yellow with the glue. That's where I rebuilt the, um, the nose. Um, but yeah, since I crashed, I think I've only flown it once or maybe twice. And uh, it's a great aircraft, so I sort of felt a bit bad and sort of figured I should probably get out and get some flight time on it. Um, but what I did uh, last night and today, which is new, is I've now added a, uh, a pan system. So the VTX and the camera used to be in this section here, and there's a static camera, but now I've got it on the canopy there, um, and I've got a left and right pan set up. Um, the reason why I didn't have this set up before is because the radio I was using before, uh, well, initially I was using the Tango 2, and then I was using the Boxer. Um, neither of those radios had a slider or a scroll wheel for controlling a um, pan. But I'm now using the Radio Master Pocket here. Um, and on the top here, there's a little scroll wheel, which means I can uh, actuate a pan servo. Um, it's not ideal because it's not a self-centering uh, scroll wheel and there's no center detent. The only way that you know whether or not you've got it centered is by that beep, so that beep sound. Um, it's not super accurate, but it is what it is. Hopefully it will be fine. Um, just want to point out, I'm just using a generic servo in here. It's not a special 180 degree servo. Um, it's a servo which came out of uh what was it my night radian glider that i had years ago um when i crashed that aircraft uh before i threw it out i ripped the electronics out and i kept the servos and it's just a generic servo in there and um by default it's got the usual amount of um rotation things like 45 degrees 45 degrees left 45 degrees to the right um but in i now configurator i just changed the endpoints so i've now got a full uh 180 degree um amount of movement and I could have had a little bit more, actually. I think you can have sort of something like 200 degrees. Like I could have it looking ever so slightly back in either direction, but then that makes the servo twitch. So that's why I didn't do that. Um, so yeah, in today's flight, I'm just going to get up and just uh, just have a quick little flight, really. I'm not planning on being here for very long. It's a very cold day. It's uh, currently about one degrees, I think, at the moment. Obviously, it's the depths of winter. And uh, it's a little bit windy. You might be able to hear that. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to keep this flight quite short and sweet, but yeah, it's going to be an interesting little test to see how well this system works and whether or not I like it. Um, so let's just check the satellites on my goggles. Yeah, that's fine. So let's uh, arm the aircraft. Make sure the recording started. It has. Okay. Wish me luck. Let's go. Straight up into the sun. Ideal. Not doing particularly well on the satellites today. I normally find uh, the GPS on this does quite well, but I've had it powered on for, uh, I don't know, about five, ten minutes, and it's only got nine sats, which is a little bit unusual. Let's just do a return home test. Return to home. Always like to do that at the start of my flights. It's a good practice just to check it's working. You want to find out later on in the flight that it's not working. It seems to be doing alright. Almost over there, just now start to loiter. Yeah, loitering around home. Okay, so we'll cancel that. Um, and I actually can't remember what flight modes I've got set on here. So let's just find that out. So currently in Horizon, cruise, cruise acro mode, acro, okay. Cruise. Let's just pop her into cruise for a bit. And we'll send her in that direction. And let's try the pan. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that does look cool, doesn't it? Is it the other way? Yeah, I can see why people like to do this. It's cool seeing those motors spinning there. Um, so let's do a left turn whilst also yeah, nice. I do. 
a little bit sketchy uh, flying with this pan set up because I literally only installed it probably about an hour ago um, and some of the parts are glued into position um, so yeah the glue hasn't had a full amount of time to fully set uh, needless to say I won't be doing any flying upside down <laughs> on this flight um, yeah we'll just keep it play it safe Oh yeah, that does look really cool, doesn't it? What I want to see is um, what it looks like when I go to zero throttle. So let's just uh, climb up a little bit higher. I actually don't know, can you go to zero throttle in cruise mode? So that is zero throttle, but no, it doesn't. So let's uh, switch that to horizon mode. horizon mode and then throttle to zero. No. So the props are just freewheeling in the wind, um, which is fine. I hear a uh, full-size plane somewhere nearby. Sounds like a little uh, Cessna or something, so I'll just keep it nice and low. Um, probably won't come anywhere near me. And he should be at least 500 feet up anyway. But let's just uh, bring it down low, just for the time being, until he's uh, flown overhead. Sounds like it's coming in behind me. So my cock goes off and have a look a second. Oh yeah, he's way up there. It's miles up. That's fine. Um, yeah, so it looks like uh, the ESC braking isn't particularly strong because it's zero throttle. The uh, props are just freewheeling. But no, it's still cool to see, wasn't it? Um, just go up a little bit. The only thing I am seeing a little bit of is a little bit of camera shake in the wind, um, which is entirely, pretty much entirely due to the way I've got the camera mounted on the servo. I've kind of rushed the design for the 3D prints for this, um, just because I wanted to get out and fly today and I didn't have a whole lot of time. So I will probably uh, refine that design at some point, and hopefully that'll make the camera a little bit more secure on the servo so it doesn't um, rock around so much in the wind there. Oh, that is cool. I do like seeing that. You can see the moon up there as well. Nice. I'm wearing gloves at the moment. I'm finding it a little bit hard just to uh, feel my grip on the, um, the scroll wheel there. Twice now, I thought I'd been rotating it and actually I hadn't. That's a beautiful day though, isn't it? Quite hard to uh, perfectly center the um, pan server there. Like that beep does help, but I think there's a little bit of a delay, so you end up overshooting the um, center point before you hear the beep. I'm kind of relying more on uh, just looking at the, the nose in the middle there to know whether I've got it centered or not. Yeah, it's working alright though. I'm pretty happy with that. So this isn't going to be a uh, Long flight today. It's very cold out here and I'm not wearing a coat because I'm an idiot. <laughs> um, I literally just wanted to get out and just get a quick flight done just to check that this, uh, this works well. And yeah, it does. It seems to be working pretty good. Um, I wonder actually, because it's got a fairly stiff breeze coming in off the sea there. Let's get back into horizon, horizon mode. I wonder if I'll be able to ridge saw off the cliff a little bit. I've done it before with the swordfish. Um, it's actually, although it's not a glider, it's actually quite good at ridge soaring. Let's just uh, point her into the wind a little bit. Bring the throttle to zero. Uh, she is descending. I'm looking at the vario there, she is descending. Just look a little bit further over the cliff edge, see if that does anything. No, not really. I think the wind's coming from slightly the wrong direction. It's sort of coming, it's not coming straight up, straight on to the cliff. It's kind of coming in diagonally. Um, but yeah, uh, as I said, this, uh, this aircraft is uh, surprisingly good at ridge soaring. So on a good day, I would be able to do that. 
power again. That is cool. I do like seeing that view. The reason why I decided to do this actually is because one of my flying buddies, he's got a swordfish uh, with a pan set up on it. And um, I think it was last week. But we were trying spectator mode for the walk snail goggles. They finally seemed to have got that working. So I was actually spectating his flight. Um, what he was flying, and he was using his uh, uh, his pan uh, set up on his camera, and I was actually just really enjoying that, and I was a little bit jealous. So that's uh, kind of why I've um, set this up on this one, uh, just because I wanted the same thing. Cruise. In cruise mode. It does feel quite sketchy doing a turn whilst you're looking sideways. Well, the good thing about being in cruise mode is like I know I haven't got to worry about the, the aircraft sort of nose diving into the ground whilst I'm turning. But yeah, it does feel a little bit weird. Um, doing turns like this. Yeah, I said in my previous videos, like I really I really like the uh, the radio mouse pocket and this little uh, scroll wheel is one of the reasons why I like it. It gives me the option now to have uh, like a panning camera set up on my aircraft, which I couldn't do with the boxer, even though the boxer is sort of technically a superior radio, it lacks that feature. Um, unless I wanted to use the rotary knobs, but they're kind of in the middle of the radio, it's not really easy to get to. Unlike this, where I can easily grab the uh, scroll wheel there. Um, yeah, just another reason why I love this little radio. Just, uh, yeah, considering it's like such a cheap radio, I think this is the second cheapest radio I've ever owned. Uh, the first one being the, um, the Fly Sky i6 or something uh, basically the first the first radio i owned the fly sky one i think that was about 50 pounds and this is 60 so yeah this is the, the second cheapest radio i've ever owned and yet it's probably the one i like the most it's a bit of a, <laughs> a weird turn of events oh look at that it would be nice to have a servo which allows me to look backwards um the one my friend's got on his uh swordfish um that does allow him to look backwards um I don't think he looks fully backwards, but he can look back a fair bit. I mean, I can just about see one of the tail fins there. So I am looking back a little bit. But yeah, it would be nice if I could look all the way back. Like I said a minute ago, though, like I did kind of um, cobble this whole system together quite quickly. Just use the servo I had in my spares bin. Um, yeah, if I was going to do this properly, I might actually buy a proper servo that might allow me to have more rotation so I can look backwards. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I'm feeling happy with this. It'd be nice to do a flight uh, sort of later in the day, like sunset as well, because like, I can now actually see the um, the LED on the wingtip there, the green one on that side. Can't really see the red in this light, but the red one over there as well. Yeah, it'd be cool to see them in the in the low light or flying at night. Unfortunately, the camera on this um, aircraft is the Walksnell V1 camera, which is um, not particularly good at seeing in the dark. But after the Pro camera on there. If I wanted to do that. Um, oh, God, I'm getting cold. I think I'm just going to fly over to this uh, little peak here, turn around, and then we'll come back in and we'll land. Um, just because it is way too cold to be stood out here for very long. I'm flying for about 10 minutes, though. Which is a, a good amount of time for a quick little test. I should also point out, um, this is the first flight I've done where I'm actually trying to narrate it in real time. you probably noticed that. Uh, I recently bought a DJI Action 4 camera. It's like DJI's version of a GoPro. Um, and it seems like pretty good audio recording on it. And I, I've got a chest strap for it. So that's what I'm, uh, I'm wearing at the moment. So this is a bit of an experiment to see is the uh, the Action 4 any good for recording narration in real time? Um, or whether it's not. I may get home and find that you can't hear a word I'm saying because the wind's blowing on me. Um, but equally it might turn out to be quite good, in which case it'll make it easier for me in the future to narrate videos because I normally have to narrate them when I get home and it's it's easier to kind of talk about what you're doing in real time um, than it is to try and do it later on because you kind of forget what you were doing in the moment. Um, yeah, let's check. Just checking there's no horses creeping up on me. Uh, the far end of the field that I'm flying in, there's some horses it's quite a long way down the field, um, but yeah, just checking they're not getting too near to me or anything. Which they're not. Anyway, um, yeah, 
I'm happy with this uh, this test of the panel system. It seems to work pretty well. So let's uh, now bring her in to Horizon land. Mode. The Swordfish is uh, a little bit of a tricky aircraft to land, um, just because it's so floaty. Um, Produces so much lift that as you try and push the nose down, it just wants to fight you all the time. Um, I've also got the fun of trying to turn around here so I'm facing to the wind. Um, but we're pulling it off. There we go. Right, nose down and flare. Flare, 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 flare. Ideal. There we go. Descent. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That worked really well. <clears throat> Not bad for a couple of hours' work. Um, quick uh, 3D print and uh, reusing an old servo from a broken aircraft. Yeah, I'm happy with how well that works. And yeah, I'm liking the pocket. I have that little scroll wheel there for activating the pan servo. It's a nice feature. Anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed watching this quick little random video of me just uh, testing that out. And um, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, guys. Bye.